As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ittaqu allaha wa abtagu ilayhi al-wasila, wa jahidu fi sabilihi la'allakum tuflihun. This is Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 35. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, O oh, you who have iman, ittaqu allaha, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa abtagu ilayhi al-wasila, and seek, and seek to him al-wasila. Al-wasila means the means of approach. This word wasila is related to the word tawassul or intermediation. So there may be deficiencies in our iman, in our taqwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands us, wabtahu ilayhi al-wasila. This is a command. He commands us to uh, fill in, as it were, our deficient gaps of iman and taqwa with al-wasila, the means of approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll give you an analogy. If you apply to a university, you know, unless you have a 1600 SAT and a 36 ACT and a 4.3 GPA because you're taking honor classes, uh, you will need help with uh, letters of recommendation, help from people who have authority and rank in academia. And it's similar in the spiritual realm. We need all the help that we can get from those nearest and dearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all practice tawassul at some level. Do you read the Qur'an? Well, the Qur'an is, is not Allah, and the Qur'an is not you. Reading the Qur'an is a means of drawing near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is technically a wasila. Some commentators they say here that al-wasila in this ayah, chapter 5, verse, verse 35, is toba, is repentance, and toba is a great thing. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, At-ta'ibu min dhambihi kaman la dhamba laha, kama qala alayhi salatu wasalam. That the one who makes toba, the one who repents from his sin, is like the one who didn't sin at all. And of course, um, there are uh, among the eight types of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explicitly says that he loves in the Qur'an, one of these are the tawabin. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who repent. And who are the tawabin? They are people who sin, then repent. Other commentators say that al-wasila in this ayah is a reference to the fara'id, the obligatory acts of worship. And yet others say, Al-Wasila in this ayah, Wabtahu ilayhi al-Wasila, and seek to him, and seek to him the means of approach. The means of approach here, according to many, is our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The means of approach to our Lord. The Ba'alawi Sadat of Yemen, they recite a beautiful benediction upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyid Muhammad, miftahi babi rahmatillah. Oh, oh Allah, uh, bless and give peace to our master Muhammad, the key to the gate of the mercy of God. Miftahi babi rahmatillah, the key to the gate of the mercy of God. So, if you think of the analogy of the rahma, the mercy or compassion of Allah subhanahu wa taala, as being um, a walled city with a gate, right? And many claim to have the key, where the true key. Is our Master Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Allah subhanahu wa taala says in the Quran, "Qul in kuntum tuhibun Allah, fatbi'uni yuhibbukum Allah." Say, if you really love Allah, then follow me. Now, Allah is speaking directly to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Say to them, if you all claim to love Allah, then you then follow me. Yuhibbukum Allah. Then will Allah love you? Then will Allah love you? Wa yaghfir lakum dunubakum. Wallahu ghafur rahim. And forgive you your sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. The sabab al-nuzul, the occasion of this verse's revelation, we are told, is that a waft, a delegation of Christians from Najran, they came into Medina and they said that they worshipped Isa alayhi salam out of love for God, right? And then this ayah was revealed, right? That they worshipped Isa alayhi salam out of love for God, but you don't demonstrate your love uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshipping Allah's creation, by worshipping Allah's prophet. You demonstrate your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by adhering, by having ittiba' 
by following the Prophet of God, whoever that Prophet might be. So the Prophet ﷺ is niftahu babi rahmatillah. He is the key to the gate of Allah's mercy. He is miftahu babi mahabbatillah. He is the key to the gate of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we want to enter into that city, that city of rahmah through the gate, we have to go through a prophet. In our case, and in the case of uh, the Muslims all around the world, and in the case of the entire world, really, because the Prophet Wasallam, he is al alamiyah he is a universal messenger, and his sharia abrogates all of the previous uh, sharia, that he is the means of approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask our Lord by means of his beloved, and we will not be rejected, inshallah, Honor the beloved of your Lord and you will be honored. This is how it works. The Prophet Wasallam he said, Kullu al-ansab tanqati' yawm al-qiyamati ghayr al-nasabi. Every lineage on the day of judgment is cut off except those who are connected to me. So the righteous Ahl al-Bayt as well as those who are connected to the Prophet Wasallam through love, what's known as the ittisal of mahabba. Think of Salman al-Farisi who was a beloved companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's not even Arab. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said something extraordinary about Salman al-Farisi. First of all, the, the Ansar, they wanted to claim him as one of their own because Salman, he traveled to Medina and became Muslim and the Ansar did that. And the Muhajireen, they said, or sorry, the Ansar, they became they became uh, Muslim in, in Medina and Salman became Muslim in Medina. The Muhajireen, they claimed him as well because Salman traveled to Medina and they traveled uh, from uh, Mecca to Medina uh, as well. And the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Salman minna ahlul bayt. Salman is from us, the people of the house, making him as it were an honorary member of the house, the prophetic house, the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Salman was beloved to Allah, beloved to the messenger of Allah. He was beloved to Allah because he was beloved to the Messenger of Allah. And there's many, obviously, examples like this, extraordinary statements the Prophet ﷺ makes about some of his companions, about Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas on the day of Uhud, when he was defending the Prophet ﷺ with life and limb. The Prophet said, Ilmiya Sa'd, shoot your arrows, O Sa'd, fidaka abi wa ummi, may my parents be your ransom. What he said about Sayyidina Umar in the hadith, لَوْ كَانَ بَعْدِ نَبِيٌّ لَكَانَ عُمَرُ If there was a prophet after me, it would have been Umar. The Prophet wasallam said about uh, Bilal ibn, uh, uh, ibn Rabah al-Habashi, he said, سَمِعْتُ خَشْخَشَةً أَمَامِي فَإِذَا بِلَالٌ When the Prophet wasallam was visiting Jannah with Jibreel alayhi salam on Laylatul Isra wal Mi'raj, he said, I heard the footsteps of Bilal in front of me. You see, all of these, all of these people, beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they are beloved to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. There's an amazing hadith that's recorded by Ibn Majah and Imam Tirmidhi, uh, narrated by Uthman ibn Hunayf. Over 15 masters, her father of hadith, have explicitly said that the following hadith is absolutely sound, including Bukhari and Nasai, Abu Nu'aym Bay Haki Tabarani, etc etc that a man who was daril al basar a man who was uh, blind came to the prophet sallallahu and he said ud'u allah li an yu'afiyani he said oh messenger of god pray to allah supplicate to allah so that i might be healed and the prophet said if you have patience it is better but if you want i will supplicate for you and the man said ud'u please supplicate so the prophet sallallahu told the man to go and to make an excellent wudu and to pray rak'atain, two units of prayer. And then say, Allahumma inni as'aluka wa atawajjahu ilayka bi Muhammadin Nabi al-Rahmah. Say, uh, oh Allah, I ask you and I turn to you by means of Muhammad, the prophet of mercy. Ya ayyuha ladhina amanu, ittaqullah wabtaghu ilayhi al-wasila. Back to our original ayah, O oh, you who believe. Uh, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek the means of approach to Him. 
right? So the Prophet ﷺ, he taught this blind man, أَتَوَجَّهُ إِلَيْكَ بِمُحَمَّدٍ نَبِيُّ Rahma. I turn to you by means of Muhammad, the Prophet of Mercy. The Prophet ﷺ is the walking Qur'an. So his prescription to the blind man was based upon the Qur'an, recognizing himself as being the means of approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a hadith in Bukhari, one of my favorite hadith. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ after the congregational prayer, and he said, Ya Rasulallah, inni asabtu haddan fa'aqim fiya kitab Allah. O Messenger of God, I have transgressed the parameters of permissibility, so punish me according to the Book of God. You can imagine how difficult this must have been for this man to go and tell the Prophet that he's disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how embarrassed he must have been, how how uh, frightened he must have been during this time. And the Prophet sallallahu said to him, Alaysa qad salayta, alaysa qad salayta ma'na, didn't you just... Uh, uh, didn't you just pray with us? Qala na'am. The man said yes. And then the Prophet said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ غَفَرَ لَكَ ذَنْبَكَ For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for already forgiven your sin. You see, this man brought his sin to the door of mercy and he was shown mercy. Well, some might say, well, the Prophet sallallahu was alive when that happened. Now, first of all, according to the sound hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is hayun fi qabrihi. The Prophet is alive, he is conscious. There's an awareness about him in his grave. In the hadith of Abu Dawood, which is a strong hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, ما من أحد يسلم علي إلا رد الله علي روحي حتى أرد عليه السلام. That not, not a person gives me salams except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, returns my soul to me so that I might reply to his salam. Imam Suyuti says the meaning of this is that his consciousness returns, a heightened state of awareness returns to him. You might say, well, how is this even possible if millions and millions of people upon the earth are giving the Prophet salams and he, and he, he can, he can, uh, he can hear that or he can respond to that? Isn't that making him into some sort of divine entity or giving him divine qualities? And the answer, of course, is no. I mean, think of a tweet. You might send a tweet out to a million followers, and at the same time, a million people see your tweet. The unseen realm is beyond our imaginative limitations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that the shuhada, the martyrs are not dead, bal ahya, they are alive. Well, who is better? The shuhada, a, 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 a martyr, uh, who's a, who's non, who's, who's a non-prophet, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who's khayr al-khalqillah, obviously the latter, uh, is better. The bottom line is that our, uh, that our ibadat, our taqwa, our iman, is going to be deficient. We need to take the means of approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to appeal to Allah's beloved, and nothing and no one is more beloved to Allah than our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, now what about after the physical passing of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? There is a narration found in multiple books confirmed by all of the Salaf. You'll find it in Kitab al-Shifa by Qadi Iyad. Imam al-Nabawi relates it as well. A Bedouin came to the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, O oh, Messenger of God, I've committed a sin, a grave sin. But I've heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَابُ الرَّحِيمًا This is from the Quran, Surah An-Nisa, I believe, ayah number 65, if I'm not mistaken, that, uh, that if only when they had uh, transgress their own souls. Come to you, Ja'u Ka. The Ka here is speaking directly to the Prophet Wasallam. And Allah had, and they had asked Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for forgiveness, and the Messenger had asked forgiveness for them. Then they would have found Allah relenting and merciful. So the Bedouin comes to the grave of the Prophet Wasallam, according to this famous narration, and he recites this ayah speaking directly to the Prophet Wasallam. O Messenger of God, I've committed a great sin, but I've heard Allah say this in the Quran, that those who come to you, right, and ask Allah's forgiveness and ask you to ask Allah for their forgiveness, 
then they would find Allah relenting and merciful. And he said, well, here I am. I'm here to ask Allah for forgiveness and to ask you to ask him for my forgiveness. And of course, he recited a famous poem here. Ya khayra man duffi nat fi turabi a'adhumuhu, O best of whose bones are buried in the earth. And it continues, Anta al-habibu ladhi turja shafa'atuhu, You are the beloved whose intercession is to be sought or hoped for. And then the Bedouin wept and he walked away. And a man named Al-Utbi was watching this happen. And after the Bedouin had left, Utbi had dozed off and the Prophet ﷺ came to him uh, in his dream. And of course, according to the Hadith, and the Hadith has reached, according to many ulama, the level of tawatur, multiple attestation, that whoever sees the Prophet in a dream has truly seen the Prophet ﷺ. And so the Prophet told told him, told Al-Utbi to catch up to the Bedouin and give him glad tidings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forgiven him. So the Bedouin brought his sin to the door of mercy and he was shown mercy. Without the shafa'ah of the Prophet sallallahu we will be lost. This isn't this idea of vicarious atonement. This is very different than the Christian idea of someone who literally takes on your sin and bears the brunt of your sin. This is not what we're talking about here. Shafa'a is not someone taking your sin. Shafa'a is someone interceding on your behalf, like uh, like an advocate of some sort with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can take your sin. You're punished for your own sin. But Shafa'a is a type of grace that can be dispensed upon us from Allah due to some sort of connection we have with those who are beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are extremists who write in their very popular books that one of the nawaqidul islam, one of the nullifiers of one's islam is taking intercession with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is ajib and gharib. I mean, good luck on the yawm al qiyamah. And I don't know what Quran these people are actually reading because the Quran that I read, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and obviously there's only one Quran, yawma idhin la tanfa'u shafa'atu. I mean, that's half the ayah. If you stop there, yeah, on that day, um, no one will benefit from intercession. Again, that's only half the ayah. There's an exception, what's called an istithna in Arabic. Yawma idhin la tanfa'u shafa'atu. Except the one, except the one who has given permission from the indiscriminately compassionate, and in his speech uh, is is well pleasing to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right in Ayatul Kursi, we all know the ayah: "Man indahu, who can intercede with him?" Who can intercede with him? Illa bi idni, except by his permission. And according to the sound hadith, the Prophet sallallahu on the yom al qiyamah, he straight to Allah subhanahu wa taala, and Allah will tell him ishfa tu shafa. Ask for intercession, and in your intercession will be granted. So I don't know what Quran they're reading. I don't know what hadith. They're reading in the hadith recorded by Imam Ibn Majah, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Yashfa'u yawm al-qiyamati thalathatun. Three types of people on the yawm al-qiyamah will be able to intercede. Al-anbiya, the prophets. Thumma al-ulama, then the people of knowledge, the scholars. Thumma shuhada then the martyrs. The Prophet Sallallahu said in a hadith recorded by Imam al-Tirmidhi and Abu Dawood, Shafa'ati li ahli al-kaba'iri min ummati. That my intercession is for the people of mortal sin, the people of grave sin from my ummah. The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith in Bukhari, يَخْرُجُ قَوْمًا يَخْرُجُ قَوْمٌ مِنَ النَّارِ بِشَفَعَةِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ فَيَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ That a people on the day of judgment will come out of the hellfire by means of the intercession of Muhammad وسلم, and they will enter paradise. The Prophet وسلم, said in a hadith in Bukhari, لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ دَعْوَةٍ Every prophet was given a supplication. فَأُرِيدُ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَنْ أَجْتَبِيَ أَنْ أَخْتَبِيَ أَفْوَنْ أَنْ أَخْتَبِيَ دَعْوَةِ شَفَاعَةً لِأُمَّةِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Every prophet was given an intercession. But I wanted to keep my, or to conceal my, uh, my supplication. If God wills for the day of judgment to be or to act as an intercession for my ummah. 
He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in a hadith that's recorded by Imam Tirmidhi, commenting on the ayah in the Quran, Asa ayyab'athaka rabbuka maqaman mahmuda, soon will your Lord, uh, soon will your Lord raise you to a, to the praiseworthy station, maqam mahmud. Was su'ila anha, and he was asked about that. What is maqam mahmud? Qala hiya shafa'a, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is the intercession. I don't know what tafsir they're reading. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, speaking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ The surah wa duha and soon will your Lord give you something, and you will be immediately pleased by it. Imam al-Suyuti says, what is this thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he will be immediately pleased? There are many uh, uh, opinions, but the main thing that Imam al-Suyuti mentions is a shafa'a, the intercession. Without the sunnah of the Prophet, we will be lost. Without the sunnah, the Qur'an become, becomes incomprehensible at times. The Qur'an is powerful, and without the sunnah wielding it, the Qur'an can become pot- potentially j- dangerous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْكُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْلَمُونَ that, that we sent among you, a messenger from you, yatlu uh, alaykum, to recite upon you our signs, to recite to you our signs, our ayat, and to purify you, and to teach you the book, teach you the revelation, teach you the Quran, and teach you wisdom, al-hikmah. We'll get to the meaning of that. And to teach you that which you knew not before. Notice it says, fi kum rasulan, in among you, a messenger among you, the immediate uh, um, uh, meaning uh, is the Arabs, right? Because the Quran is revealed first to the Arab. But the Quran is a very deep text. It's a very, very polyvalent text. It has multiple levels of meaning according to the hadith. Every verse of the Quran has a zahir and a batin and a had and a matla. It has an exoteric aspect, an esoteric aspect. It has a, it has a parameter, like a linguistic parameter, and it has uh, a high or the highest meaning, the matla, the point of ascent, the greatest meaning. So what is it? Fikum could mean the Arabs, but another meaning of, of, of the messenger being fikum in you is, is a internalization, if you will, of the sunnah, the normative practice or the agreed upon ethos of the Prophet ﷺ, that this ayah is also, is also intimating this idea of appropriating or internalizing the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in the hearts of those who are the lovers of the Prophet ﷺ. In this sense, he is hayyun fi qulubina. He is alive in our hearts. Imam al-Shafi said that hikmah in this ayah, right, that he teaches you the book and wisdom. He said wisdom here, hikmah, is the sunnah. So the Prophet ﷺ, he taught the Qur'an. al kitab. He is mu'allim of the of the kitab, of the Qur'an, wal hikmah, and its application. The Qur'an must be interpreted through the lens of the sunnah. The sunnah is the, the hermeneutic of the Qur'an, to use a modern academic term. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ That we, indeed, we sent down to you at dhikr, the reminder, in order for you, لِتُبَيِّنَ in order for you to explain to the people, to, to explicate, to make bayan to the people what has been sent down to them. And in order for them to think deeply, you know, to have tafakkur, to, to, to think deeply. The Prophet Sallallahu words, the purpose of the commentary, if you will, of the Prophet Sallallahu of the Quran, is for us to think very deeply. Not to be literalist or to be simplistic in our interpretations, but to think very, very deeply about the Qur'an, guided by the sunnah, motivated by the sunnah. The extremists, right, the mutatarrifin, they only, they only look at what the Qur'an says. Ma huwa. They only look at what it is, right? They ignore the why. Limada. Why did Allah say this? And, it's, and, the, and, 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 one, and also, the third aspect, very important, the how. Kaifa, how to implement. They only look at what. They don't look at why Allah said that, and they have no idea how to implement these things at different times in history. The latter two, the why and the how, this takes rigorous ijtihad, 
rigorous scholarship grounded in the sunnah and the principles of the sunnah of the Messenger wasallam. The method of extremism is facile and lazy. The Prophet wasallam, he said, Man an sunnati minni. How important is following the sunnah? Whoever turns away from my sunnah is not from me. And of course, the Quran describes the Prophet wasallam, Azizun alayhi ma anitum, harisun alaykum, that uh, it, 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 um, that Harisun alaykum. It grieves him that you should perish. Deeply concerned is he about you. Deeply concerned. So that when the Prophet gives us advice, when the Prophet gives us command, it's coming from a position of deep concern, right? And what did he say? Alaykum bi sunnati. I exhort you to follow my sunnah. Wa sunnatil khulafa al rashidin mahdiyin as well as the sunnah of the rightly guided caliphs, tamassaku biha, hold on to it tightly, wa'addu alayha bin nawajith, and bite into it with your molar teeth. Look at the analogy he's using here. There's a hadith of Aisha related by Imam al-Tirmidhi, that there are six people, six types of people that are cursed, that are cursed according to the statement of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, for example, az-za'idu fi kitabillah, the one who adds or attempts to add something to the book of God, al-mukadzibu bi qadrillah, the one who belies or disbelieves in the uh, divine decree. And one of these six, he says, at-tadiku li sunnati, the one who abandons my sunnah. You see, the sunnah personalizes the Quran. It provides examples of the universal principles of the Quran, what are known as kulliyat and juziyat, what are known as the universals and the and the Particulars, the minhaj of the mutatarrifin, the minhaj of the extremists, is that they elevate particulars over the universals. You see, there are particular stories attributed to the Prophet, for example, in Sira literature, and in particular hadith, for example, that do not match his universally agreed upon personality or his sunnah. You see, not everything that is written about him is true. And I'm talking here about Muslim sources. Just because it's in a Muslim source doesn't necessarily mean that it's true and that there is a difference. And it's a very important difference between hadith and sunnah. Sometimes, obviously, we, I mean, we draw the sunnah from the hadith, but th this is not a one-to-one, -one, right? There's a, there's a very important distinction to make between hadith and sunnah, that hadith is simply something that is attributed to the Prophet wasallam, whereas the sunnah is the normative or the universally agreed upon ethos of the Prophet wasallam or practice of the Prophet wasallam. So his character virtue that dominates his personality is Rahma, Ana Nabi Rahma, Ana Rahmatul Muhda. There's many hadith like this that I am a gifted mercy, I am the prophet of mercy. So anything that contravenes that is immediately suspect. Anything that contra contra contravenes that, even found in Muslim sources. This is what we have to understand. The Prophet وسلم, is in a hadith related to Imam, Imam al-Tirmidhi, Ya Bunayya, oh my dear son, is a term of endearment. If you're able to wake up and go to sleep, وَلَيْسَ فِي قَلْبِكَ غِشٌ لِأَحَدٍ فَثْعَلْ And you are able to not have any or carry any type of rancor or hatred for anyone in your heart, then do that. Ya Bunayya, he continues, oh my dear son, وَذَلِكَ min sunnati. And that is from my sunnah. This is from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Not having any rancor or hatred in your heart the whole day through. وَمَنْ أَحْيَ sunnati. He continues to speak to Anas ibn Malik. وَمَنْ أَحْيَ sunnati فَقَدْ أَحَبَّنِي And whoever revives or brings to life my sunnah, he has loved me. وَمَنْ أَحَبَّنِي كَانَ مَعِي فِي الْجَنَّةِ And whoever loves me will be with me in paradise. Revive a sunnah. It's not difficult. Abdullah ibn Harith, he said, ahadan min, min He said, I never saw anyone smiling more than the Messenger of Allah وسلم. It's easy to smile. Just smile at people. And I'll close with this, a warning in Tirmidhi related by Ubaidullah ibn Abi Rafi'ah. But the Prophet وسلم, he said, let me not find any one of you muttaki'an ala arikati, like lounging on his couch when a command that I ordered or a prohibition from me comes to him, meaning from the Prophet's sunnah, he says, La adri ma wajadna fi kitabillahi ittaba'ana. 
He says, eh, you know, I don't know. What we find in the book of God, we follow it. I don't know about the Sunnah thing. Whatever we find in the book of God, we follow it. They separate, divorce, and sever Allah from his messenger. Again, the Quran, with respect to many of its ahkam, is a difficult book. Without the Sunnah, one can make a mockery of the Quran, one can take things out of context, one can defame the Quran, one can cause humanity to revile and flee from the Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to understand one of the greatest dua one can make during this time, the last 10 nights of Ramadan, according to the sound hadith of our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, related to us from our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, is when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say during these last 10 nights, Allahumma innaka afun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Oh Allah, you are the effacer of sin and you love to efface sin. So efface from us. اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم وصلى الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته